the sub-study is looking at the subset of approximately 300 patients within HER2 climb who had brain metastases at study baseline. And the important distinction in these patients, in addition to the high proportion within the trial overall, is that 60% of the patients with brain metastases enrolled had active brain metastases. And so the vast majority, if not all, of registration trials in breast cancer, if they've included patients with brain metastases at all, have only included those with treated stable brain metastases. So this is the first registration trial in breast cancer to really include patients with active or new brain metastases um, at baseline. And um, the top line results of this exploratory analysis uh, demonstrate that among the subset of patients with brain metastases enrolled in HER2-CLIMB, there was a significant reduction by about two-thirds in time to CNS progression or death. There was also a significant reduction with a hazard ratio of 0.58 for overall survival, and this corresponded to a, a more than six-month uh, prolongation of median overall survival in this patient subset. So really the first study um, in a randomized fashion to demonstrate a survival benefit in brain metastasis patients associated with systemic therapy. And finally, among the subset of patients with measurable active brain metastases at baseline, the CNS objective response rate was 47%. Now, that was versus 20% with trastuzumab capecitabine alone. So I think all of these data put together suggest that um, the triplet of ducatinib, uh, capecitabine, and trastuzumab uh, not only leads to responses and progression-free survival advantages for patients with brain metastases, but also substantially improves overall survival.